Yeah, good afternoon. My name is uh, Ng Sean Phong. I'm from this company, uh, OpSnap Instruments in Lampaha. And today I'm going to, I'll be sharing uh, the basic of ultrasonic testing. Uh, this material is actually accepted from uh, Cloud Camel, a very famous uh, manufacturer in uh, NTT products. Now, um, in order for us to explain this uh, basic principle of ultrasonic testing, we will, I will need to share what is called oscillation. Oscillation is actually an object that actually moving back and forth. Say for pendulum, moving left to right, or for an earth, rotating. All right, uh, this is also called oscillation. Now, um, the reason I explain what is called oscillation is basically I wish to explain what is called frequency. Frequency, uh, it is actually stand for the number of oscillation per second. All right, meaning uh, oscillation is from from this one point we move for the positive cycle and through to the negative cycle and this is considered one full os oscillation now uh, this frequency uh, as we have just explained meaning in one second how many os how many cycle it can actually make now our ear we can actually hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz right within this range we can actually hear it and this is called speech or, or, or also music now, for whatever frequency that actually beyond this uh, 20,000 uh, hertz, it is actually termed as ultrasound. Uh, this sound usually, uh, you know, uh, uh, generated by the pad or quartz crystal. Uh, this our ear cannot actually hear anymore. Now, uh, another, another, another thing that I need to explain uh, uh, a little bit is actually about what is called lambda. Lambda is actually uh, can be defined as in one oscillation the t the wave front propagate by the distance of lambda meaning uh, how far it is actually traveled in one oscillation in terms of distance uh, another another important thing is about sound propagation okay um, should the oscillation you know the oscillation this is the of the sound wave so it is actually in the direction of propagation we term it as longitudinal wave, all right. And should the oscillation of the sound wave is actually uh, in perpendicular to the direction of propagation, we term it as transverse wave. And why is actually important? Uh, when we actually going to uh, uh, use with this uh, straight probe, we're going to set the um, frequency to a longitudinal wave. Only then we can get the accurate result. And when we actually uh, using this uh, angle probe, we need to use transverse wave. All right. Otherwise, the reading is going to be inaccurate. Um, now about wave propagation, uh, longitudinal wave is actually propagated in all kind of materials. However, transverse wave only propagate in solid bodies. Now, due to the different type of oscillation, right, transverse wave travel at lower speed. And how low is low? Now, for the same material, steel, uh, when we are using uh, this uh, straight probe, the sound actually travel at a speed of 5,920 meters per second. And how about transverse, transverse speed? It's actually only travel at 3,250 meters per second. There's a lot of difference, right? Now, uh, sound velocity mainly depends on the density and E modulus of the material. Oh, by the way, just to share, uh, in the air, the sound actually travels at 330 meters per second, and water is 1480 meters per second, meaning sound can also travel in water. Now, uh, this is another uh, important uh, idea that you all need to, need to know. Uh, sound wave generated by this probe before it's actually traveled into uh, another material say uh, this uh, aluminium now there is this uh, we call it gap air gap with this gap present no sound wave can actually transmit into this uh, aluminium meaning no measurement or, or detection uh, can be done so what, what you need to do in between this interface this this gap we need to actually apply liquid 
It can be coupling gel or even grease. Some of some of our customers are actually using it. All right. Now, uh, where where how how this uh, sound wave is actually generated? Actually, inside this uh, probe, there is this uh, crystal. Okay, crystal. Now, this crystal, uh, when we actually apply electrical pulse, this crystal will actually vibrate. Okay, uh, once it's actually vibrate, the sound actually will be generated. All right. Likewise, when there's a sound, when when there's a sound actually uh, reflected in a material and then come back to this uh, probe, this crystal uh, will also cause an electrical uh, voltages at the crystal uh, surface. So it can be actually detected by this uh, uh, sensor. All right. Now this signal will actually feed back to the main unit for the uh, display purpose. Okay, uh, here it is actually a three three main sensor that we use for uh, this ultrasonic uh, testing purpose. This is actually called a uh, straight beam bulb. All right, and uh, this is the crystal. This is the uh, damping material, and the present is actually to improve the amplitude, the width, and the resolution of the echo for display purpose. And uh, this is called a uh, Tiamin twin crystal probe. One is one is actually to transmit the sound wave, and the other is actually responsible to receive and detect the reflected uh, echo. All right, and this is actually the angle probe. And this is how. Uh, okay, before I show you the angle probe, uh, this is actually the TR probe that that that, actually, that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is actually something to separate two crystal. All right. Uh, this is how it look like. Okay. Now, uh, this is the angle probe. Angle probe. What is actually called angle probe because the crystal is actually sitting at an angle. Okay. Why sitting at an angle is actually for the detection of uh, a very thin material. All right. Uh, the detection can actually go down to probably uh, five mm or probably even slightly uh, thinner. Okay. Oh. Um. How the uh, sound wave is actually being uh, generated is actually generated in terms of pulse, okay. And how short is the pulse is actually in terms of one hundred nanosecond, okay. And then, and then the uh, the the controller will actually control this pulse is actually re repeat repeatedly being generated, okay. Now, this this pulse uh, can be viewed as the initial pulse over here, okay. Uh, once once the initial pulse is actually generated, uh, this will be the initial pulse generated by this hitting this uh, surface. Okay, now how this how this uh, pulse is actually generated is when the sound wave travel into this material and then reflected by this uh, back wall. So BE as it stands for back wall echo. All right, and then and then the amplitude usually is actually lesser than this uh, uh, initial pulse amplitude. Why? Because there's some losses. Of uh, energy or in in terms of its strength when it actually travel in this uh, material, and then the rest of this is actually uh, you can find in the uh, uh, main unit. Uh, their function is actually to display the uh, pulse. All right. Okay. Um, the next one. How how this uh, ultrasonic uh, probe that actually generated the uh, sound wave can actually detect a flaw. It is actually by this mechanism. Now, when a sound wave actually generated by this probe, it will actually travel in the material, and when they actually um, encounter this floor, the sound wave will actually be refracted. Okay. Now, this distance is actually considered as it's actually called as the sound path. All right. And this is the basic working principle how we actually uh, detect a floor. Now, uh, you can see it. Better over here. Say this is a plate. You know, in uh, for plate, some certain flaw will actually happen. They call it delamination uh, flaw. All right. It is actually uh, uh, in parallel with the surface. Now, say uh, this is the initial pulse, as I just explained, and and when this uh, pulse is actually reflected by the back wall, this will be the signal, and whenever there's a flaw in between these two uh, uh, surface. You will see this one pulse in between these two pulse. When you see this, 
it represents there's one flaw, meaning unwanted unwanted um, pinholes or cracks that is actually reflect the um, sound wave. So with this, we actually managed to uh, uh, do the detection by using this ultrasonic sound uh, principle. Now, this ultrasonic uh, testing, we can also use it to uh, measure the remaining wall thickness and how to do it. That is by measuring uh, what, it, uh, what is the thickness of the, of the uh, pipe. You know that is actually a uh, uh, remain. So this will indi actually indicate the thickness, remaining wall thickness. Now uh, another important thing is we can actually use this um, uh, ultrasonic uh, testing principle for welding inspection. And usually for welding inspection, we will be using angle probe. Okay, angle probe. Now this angle probe, uh, the crystal actually position at an angle. And this, this is how the uh, actually sound wave actually transmitted in, into this uh, material. All right. Now, once it's actually detect uh, any flaw, and this, this flaw can be a lack of fusion or any pinholes, and then this this uh, sound wave will actually reflect it back to be detected by the crystal, and then generate this uh, flaw signals. Okay, this echo, and from here we'll be able to tell. Um, there is actually a flaw present, and, and should there's no flaw present, you will not be seeing any pulse here, all right? Because no, 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 no sound wave will be reflected. But the moment there is any uh, flaw like this, then you will be uh, seeing a pulse over here. Now, uh, what is all this formula for? Uh, do not worry about this uh, formula. This basically tells us uh, uh, what is the depth from the surface and what is the distance from our this uh, uh, edge of the uh, probe to this position of the floor. And in the past, um, this distance, we actually need to calculate. But nowadays, with this uh, latest technology, uh, with all these uh, digital uh, um, uh, instruments, uh, all, this, all this reading is actually uh, automatically um, present onto the screen. All right? So, uh, that's all for today sharing about ultrasonic testing.